Hi guys, welcome back to Wellness Lenses. In today's show, we go deep into the fascinating world of antisocial personality disorder, or ASPD, and psychopathy. Come with us as we break down the differences, similarities, and social views of these complex psychological conditions. It's important to have a good understanding of ASPD and psychopathy. By doing this, we can clear up misunderstandings and show more compassion for people who have these conditions. So, let's begin our journey. Antisocial personality disorder, or ASPD, is a psychiatric term for a pattern of disregard for others' rights, impulsivity, and a lack of empathy. On the other hand, psychopathy is often thought of as a subset of ASPD. It includes traits like superficial charm, callousness, and manipulative behavior. Even though ASPD and psychopathy have some things in common, it's important to know how they are different. Both conditions are marked by things like a disregard for social rules, a tendency to be manipulative, and a propensity for engaging in risky behaviors. ASPD is diagnosed based on patterns of behavior, such as a history of conduct disorder as a kid and a persistent disregard for the rights of others as an adult. Psychopathy, on the other hand, is measured by things like the Hair Psychopathy Checklist, or PCLR, which looks at factors like social manipulation and lack of regret. It's important to remember that people with ASPD and psychopathy have different emotional and social situations. People with ASPD often have shallow feelings and have trouble connecting with others on a sensitive level. They might not be able to fully comprehend and empathize with the feelings of others. On the other hand, psychopathy is marked by a lack of understanding and emotional depth that is more obvious and lasts longer. Psychopaths often exhibit a callous disregard for the feelings and well-being of those around them and may struggle to form genuine emotional connections. Even though both situations make it hard to feel emotions, the ways they show up are very different. ASPD and psychopathy are both linked to patterns of behavior like acting on impulse and not caring about the long-term effects of their actions. But it's important to note that the level of recklessness can be different between people with ASPD and those with psychopathy. Some people with ASPD may act impulsively because of their current wants or because they need to be stimulated. On the other hand, people with psychopathy may act more logically and strategically when they act on impulse. This is often because they want power, control, or personal gain. Even though impulsivity is a common trait, it's important to know that the underlying reasons and patterns of behavior can be different depending on the situation. A lot of research has been done to try to figure out what kinds of neurobiological and genetic factors might cause ASPD and psychopathy. Scientists have found differences in the way these people's brains are built and how they work. This suggests that there may be neural markers at play. There is also evidence that genetic factors can make someone more likely to have ASPD or psychopathy, though the exact genetic mechanisms are not yet fully known. But it's important to remember that environmental factors also have a big impact on how things are. Studies have shown that if you were abused, neglected, or exposed to violence as a child, you are more likely to develop ASPD, or psychotic traits, as an adult. It's a complicated mix of nature and nurture, since both genetics and the environment play a role in the growth of these conditions. More research is needed to figure out the complicated links between neurobiology, genetics, and environmental factors so that we can fully understand how they work. When handling ASPD and psychopathy, it's important to be aware of the unique problems that come up because of how these conditions are made. Cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, and other types of therapy can help people manage their symptoms and stop doing things that are harmful for them. But it's important to know that the results of treatment can vary a lot from person to person. ASPD and psychopathy are not like some other mental health problems in that there is no sure way to cure them. Instead, treatment often focuses on helping people learn how to better control their impulses, 
deal with their emotions, and make decisions. ASPD and psychopathy are often surrounded by misconceptions and stigmatization within society. People with these conditions are often shown in the media as dangerous crooks or unredeemable bad guys. This has helped to keep stereotypes and fear alive. But it's important to correct these false beliefs and show compassion for people who have these illnesses. They too need to be understood, helped, and given access to the right care. By making society more caring and well-informed, we can make it easier for people with ASPD and psychopathy to get help and lower the social hurdles they have to face. When it comes to the law and forensics, ASPD and psychopathy are very important. Working with people who have been labeled with these conditions requires careful attention to issues of ethics. Finding a good balance between the need for public safety and the need to protect individual rights is a hard task. It's important for professionals in these areas to find this delicate balance, making sure that people with ASPD and psychopathy get the right help with interventions while respecting their humanity and autonomy. We can work towards a more fair and compassionate law system by addressing the moral issues and taking into account the unique circumstances of these situations. When we know how ASPD and psychopathy are different and how they are the same, we can question our preconceived ideas and treat these conditions with empathy. By learning more and spreading kindness, we can make society more welcoming and helpful for everyone. And that's a wrap for today. We want you to keep learning about and talking about these complicated conditions. Remember that empathy and understanding can go a long way in fostering a more compassionate world. Thank you for coming with us on this journey to understanding the differences between ASPD and psychopathy. If you learned something from this video, please share it with others who might also find it useful. Together, we can break down barriers, question stereotypes, and promote a more empathetic and inclusive society. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos about self-improvement and mental health. We're glad you keep supporting us and look forward to giving you more useful information in the future. To make a good difference in the world, remember to embrace diversity, grow compassion, and keep learning. Take care, stay interested, and be kind to yourself and others. Until we talk again, bye.